Good afternoon everyone, welcome to the Hilton Hotel in Liverpool. It's fantastic to be back. There's nothing quite like a fight night in Liverpool. And April the 2nd is a huge night for everybody on this table. Live on Sky Sports at the Echo Arena. We've had some great fight nights there over the last couple of years and now a new generation of fighters and one particularly ready to launch his assault on the WBC super middleweight title. Um, three major fights on the card that we're here to talk about today, of course, Beneath that, it's stacked with local talent and matchroom stars as well. But the three fights on here on the top table really do take the breath away. Before everybody says a few words, I'm going to talk about those fights. Um, firstly, I think uh, a rematch of one of the fights of the year from last year. On November uh, the 7th, we saw a huge show at the Echo Arena between Callum Smith and Rocky Fielding. And a, a fight really on the undercard that stole a show between Scotty Cardle and Sean Masha Dodd. It was a fight which many expected Cardle to go on and, and, and win in style, but we saw a great performance from Sean Dodd. And you know, some would say a controversial ending to that fight. Scotty Cardle did fantastically well to find a way back and, and you know, really go on to close the show in that fight. And I have to give huge respect for Sean Dodd for obviously taking the rematch, but even bigger respect for Scotty Cardle, because on the night he said that he would give Sean Dodd the rematch, he was true to his word. Everybody wants to see the second fight. You guys, the fans at home, Sky Sports, and uh, I'm really pleased to make that fight. I think uh, Sean deserves it, and I think Scotty deserves special respect for making sure that rematch happens on April the 2nd. Another fight that's raised a lot of eyebrows is Rocky Fielding against Christopher Rebras. I think, uh, again on November 7th, that, that one-round shootout, which you know, in the record books won't go, round, go down as, as necessarily how it played out. Great round at the Echo Arena, and Rocky Fielding and Callum Smith uh, went to war on that night. Callum, of course, victorious, but Rocky deserves a lot of credit for his role in that fight, but more importantly, the way that he's bounced back to take this fight. We've seen Christopher Abras in the UK on a number of occasions. He gave George Groves a wonderful fight, he gave Callum Smith a wonderful fight, and now Rocky Fielding, who you know, could have taken an eight or a 10 round, or even an easy touch, came straight back in the deep end for the WBC international title against Christopher Abras. It is a wonderful fight, and again, much respect to Rocky and Oliver Harrison, his, his trainer, for taking that fight. The main event is really a mouth-watering encounter. Um, Callum Smith, who in my opinion is one of the very top talents in world boxing, has manufactured himself over the last few years um, as the number one challenger for the WBC title. I really think he deserves this final eliminator for the mandatory position against Badu Jack. Um, he's fought three fighters in the top 10 in the WBC, Sej Locker, uh, Rebras and Rocky Field. He's had three WBC eliminators and now he gets the final eliminator to become the mandatory challenger to Badu Jack. In front of him is the European champion, a belt that's also on the line, Adila Muhammadi, who we've seen having six impressive victories after losing a great fight against James de Gaulle a couple of years ago in, on these shores as well. Um, Adila with his team of Salvatore and Chris Kirchi really are coming to win, defend his European title with pride and of course the golden goose at the mandatory position for the WBC title. So we're going to hear from all the guys, and firstly I'd like to uh, pass down to the challenger for the British title. Always a pleasure to have you back, Sean Dunn. Cheers, Ed. Um, I'd just like to you know, thank Ed again for this opportunity. I'm in his hair again, and I'm looking to stay that way. You're gonna, you're gonna, I'm going to be like a knit Ed in your hair, mate. <laughs> I'm going to be a pain. And I'd like to say thanks to Scott as well, because he showed, you know, he's true to his word. He's a true, true fighting man. Um, I respect him before the fight, truly respect him now for this warrior inside of him, but um, you know, on the night I'm, I'm going to be victorious because I didn't believe that I could win that night. I, I boxed because I, you know, I took a risk and then he gave me that opportunity and you know, proved people what I was capable of, but I believe that I'm going to win you know, come the 2nd of April and I'm going to do a number and, 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 you know, and I can't wait. Hope you're all tuning in, and it's going to be an exciting fight. I guarantee that's if you know Scott does his part, and we're all good to go. Thank you, Sean. Obviously, uh, talking about the belief, you know, your story was uh, coming out, taking the Buckland fight short notice, you know, coming victorious there, and then taking the Cardinal fight, and, and then, like you say, many didn't give you much of a shot in that fight, but now, after the nature of the first fight, you have the belief to go on and win the British title. Yeah, um, I've had a little taste of that level now, um, and it tastes nice. I felt like I, I, I deserved to be there. All the hard work over the years seems to be paying off. I, um, and like you said, Ed, I shouldn't have been there. 
you know, everyone had me written off. I had myself in a in a way, you know, I was like saying to pinching myself, you know, what am I doing here? You, you know, fighting Scott Carden. I used to go up and watch him sparring with it. Well, I used to go up with Joe and fight him up to spar because all that. And I used to see Scott and he just, you know, he just turned over then. And he was, you know, you'd hear about his uh, reputation as an amateur. And I used to watch him and think, oh, wait, yeah. Found out that he was like welterweight and I used to think, you know, thank God. He's just a tricky, classy operator. And I never got to spar him, thankfully, but, uh, and then next thing you know, I'm fighting him. So I didn't have the belief, you know, I knew I was a bit out of my depth, but now I believe, truly believe that I would beat him. And um, he's only human and I know I can do it. And, I, and I'm really sure that I'm going. Scotty, obviously a, a great fight on April 2nd. Um, not really panned out the way you probably expected it to. And obviously you got involved in the fight. You had a couple of serious cuts as well, but uh, looking for a, a better performance and a more clinical performance on April 2nd. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it, as always, fighting in Liverpool, so it's a, a big thing for me, I love the city, as everyone well knows. Um, obviously, I've got aspirations for going for bigger and better titles, but I've, I've told Sean straight after the fight that I wanted a rematch. And on myself as well, I, I underperformed on the night. I want to show everyone that I'm there yeah, and what I was at. I shouldn't have got drawn into the fight, I did. Um, I'm classier than that and I'm going to show it on the night. Um, hopefully after that you can move on to bigger and better things, but my mind's fully on the 2nd day of April now. I'm looking forward to it, can't wait. How much will the experience of the first fight, obviously Sean had huge amounts of support, not just his own fans, but also from Callum's fans and Rocky's fans. You learned a lot that night. You know, you'd never been in that kind of atmosphere before, that kind of crowd, but this time you know exactly what to expect. Yeah, it's all experience at the end of the day, and uh, I've experienced a lot that night. I walked out to a, a, a reception I've never experienced, and every credit to Sean, he brought he brought some uh, he brought a lot of fans over from across the water, and um, brilliant. Don't get me wrong, it's it's great for a boxing atmosphere. Um, it don't get me wrong, it played it played its part on me. Um, I I got a bit riled up on the night, but. Uh, I've experienced that now, and uh, I know what to look look towards, and uh, just got to concentrate on the fight now and the job in hand. Thanks, Scott. British fight fans love to see Christopher Abras over here. Like I said, great fight for George Groves and Callum Smith, and uh, Christopher ahead of your fight with uh, Rocky Fielding. Say the, the most important thing is just to go the April 2nd is uh, come here and, uh, and win and win the fight. Thank you. We have an interesting three-way translation team going on here. We are, we are going English to uh, Italian, then Italian to French, back to English, and no, to Italian, and then a little bit of English. So uh, thank you very much for that. Rocky, obviously it didn't play out for you like you wished on November 7th. It was still a wonderful night, a great occasion, and uh, you gave it everything, and it was a very, very exciting three minutes for sure. But now, straight back in, into a really tough fight against Christopher Abras. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, go to the ball in the seventh floor. You know, I've got to move on now. And, yeah, I didn't want to go and take any any eight rounds or ten rounds, and all the rest of back into you know a decent fight to get me up again. So yeah, you know, I'm watching the basket go over and against Callum. Yeah, you know he's fit and he, and he comes he comes to win. So I'm looking forward to you know having a good fight on April second. Obviously, you were approaching, you know, world level before your fight with Callum. The defeat set you back, but you feel like as though a win against the Brass will put you straight back on in that standing. Yeah, yeah, I've got to be, uh, obviously do do a better job than what Callum goes, but you know, take a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go to the points and get much better. So the uh, that's what you know, plan on doing is you know, getting a good win on them and you know, just get you back to the and, um, 
two gentlemen who seem to be at all our shows these days and on our press comments tables. Welcome to Salvatore Churchy and, and Chris Kirchy as well. Um, Salvatore, uh, this is a big fight for your fighter, Hadila Mohammadi, and uh, Chris as well. You know, when we got the approval from the WBC and the sanction letter, this was a must-take fight for both guys. Obviously, both guys ranked uh, in the top 10 in most governing bodies, but the European title didn't quite feel like enough. This is a fight for the mandatory position for the world title. Yes, the, thank you, Andy. This is a big fight for uh, both boxers. So we know Colombia is fighting from a fighting family, for brothers, for champions. One is European champion, while the other is uh, WBC silver champion, one of the best prospects in the uh, in, uh, UK. So Mohamedi also is a very tough fighter. He proved, uh, he proved before and he uh, will prove uh, again on uh, April 2nd. And, uh, Hope it would be a good fight, and uh, I'm sure it would be a good fight. Thank you. And uh, Hadila, uh, your thoughts ahead of April the 2nd? Alors, ce que je pense du combat de, du, 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 du avril, c'est uh, que je rencontre le, un des meilleurs uh, boxeurs anglais. Moi, je suis le meilleur boxeur français. Uh, je suis aujourd'hui aussi détenteur du. Uh, de la ceinture européenne. Ça va être un grand enjeu, tout simplement parce que tous les deux, on voudra le, le titre mondial. Voilà. Both, both, uh, both box. I say Colonel Smith is one of the best in Britain. Is one of the best in France. But the final goal, his goal, is to fight for the WBC title, and uh, he want to win this fight to fight for the WBC title. Callum, obviously, uh, a number of big fights now at the Echo Arena. You've made that your home now, really. Obviously, a sellout crowd last time against Rocky Fielding. And Expecting another huge crowd here for, without doubt, the biggest fight of your career so far. Yeah, I think it is the biggest fight of your career. Um, hopefully, you can get good numbers. It's good to be back in the yeah, arena again. I love boxing here, and just so hopefully, I can keep getting big numbers and keep, keep bringing big fights to the city. And oh, this is a big one. My dream, I'm going to take pros to fight for the world title. And you no, know, a winner, April second, guarantees me a shot for the world title. So, you no, know, I can't afford to have any slip ups. Mohammed is a good fight there. He's strong, you know, he comes to win and he's European champion, so he's got me full respect. But you know, I do believe, you know, go camp with Joe and as long as I listen on the line, then I'm good enough to win and you know, win style. Obviously, um, over the years, you know, we've been, I guess, calling out, you know, a number of fighters, you know, whether it's George Grove, whether it's Badu Jack, and, and now they seem to be calling you out, yeah. which is a nice position to be in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, really are established now as one of the top 168 pounders in the world. Yeah, I think it's a compliment to me. It shows how far I've come. Oh, at the time when I was called, Joe he didn't really want to know. He was, you know, pushing me aside and saying he wanted to fight the world title and stuff, and then now it's switched around. So I think that's just great to myself. It shows that you know, I am you know, some of the best super weight in the world. And, I do believe, you know, within time, I can beat them all and I can become the best 60 pounds on the planet. Joe, obviously another busy night for you. I don't think uh, you'd be happy if we didn't just remind everyone of your recent Ring Magazine Train of the Year triumph. I think you I know you like to keep that quiet, but uh, on a serious note, a huge fight for Callum and obviously the, the carrot of the final eliminator was one that we just couldn't refuse. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, it was a uh, Fantastic atmosphere back in November when Callum and Rocky fought. Um, it was great for the sitter. And I think the same thing will happen in April. I think Rocky's in a really good fight. I'm sure he's and fans have got to come out and support him in a very winnable fight for him. And he's back in the scene. Callum is a huge fight for Callum Smith. It's the first time or the first opportunity for him out of his four brothers to win a European title. And not only that, though, he's 36 minutes away from fighting for the world title against a, a good champion in Badoo Jack. Um, I've always talked about Callum's um, potential and that's what he has to show in this fight, the potential and uh, show everyone the talent that he is. We've seen glimpses of it during the way through his three year career up to now 
Uh, but there's still an awful lot more still to come from Callum Smith, and we need to see that come April the 2nd. Mohamed, they're a very good fighter. They have James DeGale, plenty of problems on a good win of, uh, run of wins at the moment with knockouts. Um, and he'll be coming in as himself, thinking, defend this belt. And I'm fighting Badu Jack, so you've got two hungry fighters with uh, both got to put it on the line. But like I said before, there's so much more still to come from Callum Smith, and I expect him to showcase that and remind everybody that Callum Smith is one of the talents in world boxing at the moment. Obviously, same question that you know a lot of people who seem to be calling Callum out now and looking for an opportunity to fight him, which he's always pleased to see. Yeah, obviously George Groves fought the weekend, and um, I, I think he's one. In, I read last night he he done a lot of fight Martin Murray because it's too easy, and I'm like, God, I don't think Martin will take that too easy. But he sees Callum Smith as an easy uh, an easier job, or he wants to fight Callum Smith. And uh, when we made inquiries about it, as you know, 12 months ago, Callum Smith wasn't at that level yet. Very much like years ago when they said Anthony Crawler wasn't world level, but they all want to fight him now. And uh, is in the shoes on the other foot now, Cam Smith's in the driving seat, and his opportunity, George Groves, has got to go away and earn it and go back and start again. And uh, he can't be going around like a crybaby all the time, expecting shots just because he has blowouts like the other night against somebody that, listen, I'm surprised Sky even showed that fight, so that's it. Do you know what I mean, Cam Smith, it's his turn now. George Groves had three shots, what more does he want to do? There's, there's Jamie Cox out there that's offered him the fight, and I haven't heard him take that one. I'd just like to clarify that it was a, that it was a great fight between Graves and Lewis. <laughs> and it races very well and Sky are very happy. So, uh, thank you, Joe. Um, you're doing so well. Um, cheers, everyone, for coming. This is a, a huge fight now. We've got a, a number of other top fighters on the bill. Tom Farrell, another Liverpool, Liverpool fighters. Tom Doran, also in a title fight on the bill. Um, young Scott Fitzgerald, uh, Commonwealth Games champions, also having his second fight on the bill and, and a number of top other talents and three mouth-watering fights up here on the main table. So get ready for April 2nd. Tickets are available, available to our Fight Pass customers now. We'll go on general sale from Echo Arena tomorrow. Um, we're going to have head-to-heads up here between the, the six fighters, um, and then everyone's available for one-on-ones. Thanks very much for coming. We'll see you on April 2nd.